Hi, so here I am late for my own live. Well, what can you say? And I've just been around all afternoon. <laughs> I have no reason for being late. But there you go. I'm late for my own live. Oh, well, I have everything ready. So prepared, just late. <laughs> late late which isn't bad really when i live a life where i have no time constraints so that's pretty cool i just have to remember to be on people's lives um i have a hard time matching with people's lives because where i'm in cyprus there's very few that kind of not just match my daytime but match a time that suits me either i'm not having a meal a lot of people i'm either just had dinner or just about to have um like lunch dinner or just about to have evening meal and obviously i've got mike to consider so it's not a case if i can just have it another time so there's very few channels that match with me obviously seasons matter if i'm gardening in the sort of more cooler times of the year then i'm not going to be hanging around in the afternoons Mornings, I like to get my videos made or posted. So there's very few channels I can connect with. And being on a, a lockdown again, it's uh, it's my little uh, lifesaver. So that was one reason I decided to do lives, to connect with people that I can't connect with necessarily on their channel live. So I might not be on your live but I would like to. <laughs> if you do have a set live time and you think your times will connect with me, then do let me know because I, I'm, I'm looking for lives I can actually watch. So I want my mornings. Um, I'm just trying to think what times I can tell you. The, let me just look over here for a minute. Let's see my time difference. Okay, I've only got American time, so if you're Australian, I think you're around six and a half hours ahead of me. Bear in mind, I'm looking for more morning lives, some afternoons. So if you're my daytime, do let me know. I believe I'm 10 hours ahead of PST. I'm eight hours ahead of Central and seven hours ahead of EST, Eastern Standard Time. So if you think you do a live, um, please tell me regular lives because this is half my battle. It's hard for me to know what day it is half the time with my brain condition. And I do like to make a chart up and then I put it down. So if you do have a time, and you'd like me to come along i would love to do that haven't been on lives recently very much for obvious reasons um i'm getting there it's up and down i can't say i'm getting better and i can't say i'm getting worse because i can literally be different from in five minutes time i can be completely different um things pick me up but it's not um just having things that pick me up and make a difference that doesn't always make a difference so it, it obviously helps if i've got peeps anyhow welcome finally to the pea brain show and i thought we'd start today with i think a lot of you like this i seem to be down a little bit let me just try and shift about a little bit I have to rest. It's not my neck or my head. I kind of have to rest the back of my shoulders, which helps my brain a little bit. So it's not actually my head or my neck. <laughs> so that's, that's a bit better. I shouldn't have moved. <laughs> that's a bit better. Oh, we can't see black tropical stickers. Look. Look. Yay. Two stickers. From black tropical homestead if you want your sticker up there and a mention i've got nothing to send you in return 
But if you want your sticker up there, there you go. I think my address is in the description below. Anyhow, let's begin with my first section that people say they quite like. Is Nats, Nats, Hacks, Facts and Stats. And this can be about anything. Today, I know a lot of people are in their jam making season. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about jam and freezing jams. I may have missed them, but I haven't seen anyone doing videos on freezing jams. Uh, and things that go wrong making jams. I'll talk about that as well. So for my notes, forgive me reading my notes, but it helps me not to have to think too hard. Freezing jams. Freezer jams are uncooked. They can be stored in the freezer for three to six months. You must use fresh ripe fruit for these and they must be brightly colored and therefore they retain the flavor and aroma of the fresh fruit. The jam should contain a large proportion of sugar and the amount for each pound, which is 450 grams of fresh fruit, is high. So don't make more than one batch at a time. It's best to pack the jams in small quantities in freezer-proof plastic containers with tight-fitting lids. Now, this is different to a lot of things that you freeze. You need to allow half an inch or one centimetre headspace for expansion of the frozen jam. So not sealed airtight with no space like most other things you freeze. Freezer jams keep for up to one year in the freezer. Jams should be stored for one hour before serving. And after opening, they should be stored in the refrigerator and quickly used up. So it won't keep them fresher longer once they're defrosted. Freezer jam will have a soft consist constituency, consistency, ignore me. Freezer jam has a soft consistency and is not as firm as a cooked jam. They also make delicious fruit sauces for things like your ice creams and desserts and so forth. Um, things that go wrong with the jams. I think this is what put people off a lot. Plus for me, I make jams a bit differently. I don't have all the equipment and don't do all the ultra boiling and bits and pieces. So I make more like your lemon curd style type jams. I do have videos on that i don't know if they're on this channel or my other channel tranquility through life's natural beauty i don't know which one that is um i won't go into the actual making of jams because there's so many people recipes out there and as i say there seems to be a lot of jam making going on at the moment it's that season for a lot of people but let's talk about when things go wrong, why do things go wrong? What happened? Moldy jam. Moldy jam results from um, having your fruit too ripe when you use it. If anything, slightly underripe is better or full ripeness. But if they're starting to turn, they are not the fruits to use. So it's your best fruits not your bits and pieces, oh, I use that, I use that. Um, so, mouldy jams from overripe fruit, slow or insufficient boiling with the sugar can also cause it to go mouldy, or cold or damp jars, incorrect covering, if you use wax discs, they should be put on when the jam's very hot, or cold or poor storage can cause mouldy issues and a lot of jam makers will tell you also the preparation of the jars make sure they're sterilized in whatever way you like to do that 
Another problem that happens a lot is that the jam does not set or is syrupy. I say jam, I know a lot of you call them jelly. Um, this results because of the lack of pectin. The fruit could have been overripe, in which case the normal pectin has deteriorated. Insufficient boiling or overboiling past the setting point. Insufficient acid in the fruit or lemon juice. Jelly can be affected if the strained juice is left too long before using. And the last one I want to talk about today is what went wrong and why jam making. Another reason, sometimes the jam crystallises and this could be due to overboiling with the sugar. Too much sugar has been used or sugar has not dissolved completely so i hope there's some tips there for you don't forget experiment i've got recipes i haven't done them actually i need to do lemon and carrot jam i don't think i've seen anyone do that one obviously mixing different fruits has anyone done a zucchini jam out there i'm contemplating having a go at that i haven't seen that do let me know um Obviously, like you can do rhubarb and all your fruits, or indeed chutney. I'm more interested really in making like relishes and chutneys and things like that. I've just realized I'm actually probably facing that way too much because I've actually got my legs up on this desk again, so I'm a bit on the skew whiff. Do you say skew whiff, or is that an English term? Skew whiff, not straight. On the kink. Okay, let's go on to the next topic today. And this is the topic I call It's All Greek to Me. I love to show you that this is not the flag of Cyprus, this is the Greek flag. This is the flag of Cyprus. I think I might put actually one on my board there. I might do a another one of these and put that on my board lots of people have particularly the american flags i see in a lot of videos and my friend josh has the original the proper australian flag and if you don't know what that's all about do go on indian yard homestead and he will be delighted to tell you all about that and i hear josh is thinking about doing his lives again very soon so do I would assume he will mention it also in his community post section. So do check that out. He used to do really wonderful lives and uh, always full of information is our Josh growing and obviously living quite, I would say frugally. I would say, um, oh, what would you say? Kind of like the outback, living like that kind of lifestyle. Okay, so what am I going to do in this section today? Well, I thought I'd read a little bit from a book I have about rural Cyprus and things such as people often ask, oh, are there still donkeys there and things like that. And what made me think about reading this out was because we have donkeys just up the mountain, a tiny bit more, about five, five, ten minute walk, not even ten minute, five minute walk up the mountain there. And it's actually run by, in Devon, in England, it's a donkey sanctuary there and they have a branch out here and they actually have two different areas here that they have the donkeys. And it's going to close this area in October, I believe. I went up there um, a while back and just filmed some more donkeys for you just so you can see them and I'll probably do a little bit about the donkeys again in, on a video when I share that and it's because there's most of the donkeys were old retiring donkeys from different places all over Cyprus and there's not many left and rather than having two low grade um, areas going with not many donkeys they're moving all the ones here to the other one 
I think there was probably only about 10 when I went up there the other day. And the land here is rented. And I did do a video about how I had to give, along with other owners of land around here, permission for the donkey sanctuary to rent the land up here and build all the stables and whatever else, all the barns. And we had to give our permission because obviously noise of a donkey Although we've got another neighbour quite nearby that has a donkey as well. So I love the sound of the donkey's brain. And do go and look at um, Mayfield Ranch channel if you like donkeys. Let's say that's the one to watch today. I haven't actually done a link because I've just thought of it. So as we're talking about donkeys, I'll type in the channel. Oh, can I bring it up? Mm, I could, but... Um, I'm not really uh, jumping around today. Let's just type the channel in for you. I've only just thought a bit. If I remember at the end, I might go back and put a link in. Mayfield Ranch. Um, if you want to see donkeys, that's a channel to go to. And she will help you to tell you. I'll just do there. And as I always say, you don't need a link. As long as you've got the name of the channel, type it in. I think I've typed that right. There. So that's my one to watch today on your coffee break. Just look through. She's got all sorts of info and donkeys on most of her videos. And she's got like the babies and the mama. And it's really sweet. She's got other farm animals too. Let's say that's the video to watch today because I um, planned on one so that's Mayfield Ranch and it's Katie's the uh, lady and her husband's called Gary he's not in so many videos and I love Charlie Charlie's the uh, great big black pig and she's got pictures when he like smiles and his bottom teeth are all out and he just looks so cute he really does so the one to watch in your coffee break today Mayfield Ranch YouTube channel. Yes, so that made me think about the donkeys. And I was talking about the in Devon, they've got the uh, main, they're the ones who run the charity, the donkey. And my aunt actually works there. So that's how I know all about the links and everything. And the time was up for the rental coming up soon uh, for the land up here. And I think they probably would have had to have gone through asking, searching for the people who own land out here again. And uh, they still have to give permission if, if they don't live here. And uh, as I say, there wasn't enough to keep this side of it going. So they move it. So I can't do my little walks up to the donkey sanctuary now. And that's something I like to always take my guests to. The other one... It's a drive away. It's not a long, long way away, but it's a drive away um, towards Paphos. Uh, I think it probably does come under Paphos, but right over this side. So on the border, or it might not quite be in Paphos. Maybe not. It's somewhere on the border anyway. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can visit that one because this one you can't visit it's uh, holding for them, but you can walk past. You've seen on my walk videos, and as I say, got another video. I just filmed a quick little 10 minute bit, just filming the donkeys, and they all came running out. So that's why I thought I would read from my book um, about what it says about rural Cyprus, because you know I promote where I live, the rural Cyprus, or as I call it, the true Cyprus. And it says, the island of Cyprus may be small, but it has literally hundreds of villages, many of which are no more than a handful of houses clustered around a church and a coffee shop that also serves as the village store, post office and general meeting place. Now, my village centre is the spring and that's all there is. There's no buildings. There's no shop. There's nothing. That is my village centre. There is nothing here at all. Nothing in walking distance of shops or 
food or tabernas or coffee shops, nada, nada. In the more remote parts of the island, these villages have remained virtually unchanged and although motorised transport has made them more accessible, their older inhabitants still cling to the traditional lifestyle and basically, which basically revolves around the seasons of planting and harvesting. It certainly does. For some of these people, the donkey is still the preferred mode of transport and these faithful animals can still be seen making their way home from the fields laden with firewood or green foliage for the family goats. Even in the larger villages, traditional values are still very much in evidence. Here, maybe the village shepherd carries a mobile phone and the farmer drives to his fields in a double cabin pickup truck but this is merely a sign of the times a veneer that when scratched will expose the true character of the village people family orientated warm-hearted friendly and unbelievably hospitable the main activity in rural Cyprus is livestock arable farming. What is growing where depends on the area, the terrain and the climate. But the island's range of produce is amazing. Just about anything will grow here, from tropical fruits such as mangoes, kiwis and bananas to produce more associated with that from northern climates. On the island's south-facing slopes, especially in the western parts of the island, are the vineyards. Cyprus is famous for its fine wines, and a visit to one of the many wineries is a great way to spend a day. The grapes are harvested during autumn when entire families from grandparents to the youngest of toddlers work together in their vineyards to bring in the crop. Well, that's, that's very typical, very typical. I've spoken about bananas before. There's only one main area where you can grow bananas, although our neighbours got one. It's, it's trying, it's trying hard. Um, it's just that slight terrain difference can make all the difference. So it's not an area, it's like obviously the terrain and just a height difference or if you've got a wind coming through and the main area where they actually do grow the bananas where they have um, the plantations actually is in Paphos right by the sea and there are big um, banana plantations there so there's that Okay, let's move along. Let's do my next section, inspiration and creation. I keep sitting up and then I notice I've scooted down again. Right, pull the chair forward. It's because I've got my legs up. I think I'm getting too comfortable. Let's put the chair back. There we go. Okay, inspiration and creation. And I'm going to continue this section for now, showing more of my paintings and drawings because people quite like that. Oh, talking of which, on the 15th of August, which is next Monday, if any of you know Shirley's channel, Painting with Squirrels, she's doing an auction on her channel live she hasn't given me the actual time yet so again check out her channel and find out or i'll let you know when i know and she does painting and she is going to auction them off live so let me write that channel in oh and if i've been on your channel lately i'm not typing too much painting with Squirrels. Oh, that's wrong, you see. Squirrels. So 
Oh, that is painting auction fifteenth uh, of August. There we go. Look at me. Look at me go. Yeah, so I'm saying if I'm on your channel, I'm not visiting everyone's. I'm trying to. It hasn't helped keeping off YouTube. Um, I've been going on. I've My films are made, so I'm just literally posting those. So you'll see posting as per normal. I'm still posting. I have been on some channels. I'm trying to just say hello to everyone so I don't have to. It's re reading the chat um, isn't the best for me. On a fast channel. Um, yes, yeah, so I've, I've not been on everyone's. I've been on a few when I felt a bit more like doing it. I was fine this morning. Um, the other day I was still sorting bits out. I've got a few bits here I'm sitting sorting out. But literally about an hour ago, two hours ago, I was just at that, don't want to do anything. Normally for me, as bad as I get, I still feel I want to do something but can't. And about an hour, a couple of hours ago, I was like, you know, we all get those days when you just like, don't want to do anything. And I was like, uh, nah. <laughs> so I was like, oh do your life <laughs> and i thought there'd be some people here to chat and perk me up but no anyway so talking of paintings these are my paintings and if anyone wants to buy my paintings you can have some i don't know what i'm going to do with them really if anyone wants to buy my paintings <laughs> just tell me what one you like so i did this one I, as you know, I've said it many times, I try to just draw and paint different things. And because I still not really found quite my niche. And I try different techniques and different mediums. And I love stationery. <laughs> not so much paints, but stationery. I might do some more sort of drawings and then use colour pens and things. I love stationery like pens, coloured pens, and I'll do a haul one time, show you all my coloured pens. I haven't got that many now, but highlighters and, you know, all this back-to-school shopping they do in America. Oh, my gosh, I would love that. <laughs> uh, so there's that one. Let's put you down there. Probably blow away because my fan's on. Oh, this was more drawing and then painting i tried to sort of pick out similar ones today so this is drawing and painting you see like that's okay but to me that's like quite basic i don't know what you do shading i suppose don't know how you make things look better i suppose it shouldn't be one color well it's not it's sort of it's not quite one color but yeah, I don't know. I think depth, it needs depth or something. I know there's YouTube channels. I should really watch one to see how to do things. Uh, oh, this was just a drawing. It looks like maybe it's that colour pencil. Do you guys know Marmite? It's not Vegemite. It's very different to Vegemite. People compare the two. I don't like Marmite. But I love Vegemite. You can't get it here. But I do love Vegemite. I love Vegemite. Oh, I do very much. I like it on toast. I don't know if people eat it just as a sandwich, which is what Marmite people did, or Marmite they put in like hot water. Never had it like that. I'm not keen on Marmite. But I like Vegemite. You could get it in England. I haven't had it out here. Oh, I lie. Someone did bring it out for me when they came to stay. And this, I know what I'm not good at drawing and painting is people. I've done, oh, I have to find, I've done like cartoony caricatures of faces. I can do that, but proper people. 
I cannot do. Let's pull it back first so you can see the whole thing. Whoopsie woo. Yeah. Proportions are dead hard. <laughs> Proportions are hard. I think the front person, this arm's pretty good the way that the it's getting like the angles and that. I've even got those um what do you call it, those wooden things of people where you can pose, pose the wooden mannequins for drawing. I've never tried to do it with those. I actually bought them uh when I started doing videos on my dance channel a dance channel in case you don't know shall i type that in as well uh i'll just talk to myself guys <laughs> everything dance your mentor check out this this Oh, ooh, it's all about the shout outs today. Yeah. Um, so I bought them when I had when I started the dance channel, everything dance your mentor, because I wanted to show um it's a cheerleading video. I think I posted it again with that. I make loads of videos, some of them are sort of two, three years old, and I haven't even posted, I just make like a whole whack. So obviously I can't do a lot anymore and I did a cheerleading one and I wanted to show the positions in the air of the different jumps and leaps and all that and I thought hmm, how can I do that and show, really show like the arms and the legs so I thought I know I'm going to buy one of those and then I can pose it in the position that you're supposed to be when you jump in the air for each type of position and each type of cheerleading jump. And I thought that was quite cool. And while I was there, they were so cheap. They were only about two euros, something like that. And they're the proper size ones. And I thought, oh, I'm going to buy two. Because I can also use them for the dance channel again under the ballroom playlist. When I want to show holds for the man and lady. And show their holds. So I don't know if I posted that one yet or not. There's about 100 videos sitting there made and not posted. And I'm still going through stuff that I want to use clips out of other things as well. And because I'm now on Mike's computer, I've been on his for quite a while since my browser issues. I uh, went in the wrong browser the other day because it still has to be on here because I haven't got everything on the new browser. And that's going a bit funny as well anyway. Um yeah, because I'm on Mike's browser, I went in to go through a big dance video and edit some bits out to make up more videos, and I don't know where the file's gone, <laughs> it's disappeared, so he he was pretty sure he transferred all my dance pictures and videos over, but hey-ho, so I might have lost some, and unfortunately there was a couple of bits of me dancing on that, I was like, oh, I wanted that anyway. So here's another one I drew and then painted in. So there's that one. A bit closer. I quite like that. When I was in school and I did art, as in pottery, you had to draw first what you were going to make. Like, not design as such, but draw something and then make it. And we had to do something mechanical. And I did my mum's old-fashioned vacuum cleaner, which in England we call it the brand, which is Hoover, and it was a Hoover. And I drew that, and I, it was really good. And then I made it out of um, clay. I don't think I've even got a picture of that. That was sad because that was really good. That was Oh, that's why I haven't got a picture of that because it was an exam piece. It was for an exam. I think it was probably for the A-level, possibly and uh so you didn't get to take it home you didn't get to keep that and i remember that being a really good drawing so maybe sort of 
objects. Maybe I'm better at objects because I think those shoes are pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. There's that one. We've got one more picture. Tigres. That's how we say it in Greek. Tigres. I think the proportion's out. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I'm no good at animals. Mind you, I showed you some the other day and they weren't too bad. Maybe it depends on the type of animal. I think horses are supposed to be the hardest animal to draw. Maybe, especially one running, galloping, especially that. Okie dokie, let me have a drink. <clears throat> struggling a bit guys but what else am I going to do nothing so I might as well chat to those who want to check out the chat later and don't forget if you're watching this back later please hit that thumbs up really appreciate it and I really love comments I did ask in my live last week on my Wednesday one the chit chats these theme ones, do you like the themes? And if so, is there a particular one of the topics or several that you like? Hey, hey, glitter bombs to you. You're the first person in my chat. I've been going, oh, 36 minutes. <laughs> nice to see you. Shirley, I've just been promoting your painting auction. Do you have a time for it yet? Oh, you was live. Oh, you was live. Oh, of course you was. You're normally on before me and I know, normally have a look at yours. Um, yeah, if you look back in the chat, I've just been promoting your painting auction. If you know a time yet for it, then uh, do uh, type it in. Type it in. Do type it in. I'm promoting it for you so now I'm going on to my section that I like to call so grow mo and ho 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 Shirley's come on the right time for the gardening section so I thought today I would go through my little notebook see I make little notebooks my grown-up adult notebook him Something panda is something to do with, I've gone. Kung Fu Panda, that's him. Hey, Neil, how are you doing? I'm on Brainger Entertainment Mondays. I got on their show. Don't know them. Don't know them. Sounds like your peeps for sure. Is that where you've been, Neil? 6 p.m. your time, what your auction? 6 p.m. your time. And what are you? What time span are you? Are you, I don't know what they, what you call your time, because I can promote it, but I don't know it. <laughs> okay, so yes, my little exercise book where I write down my little gardening ideas and things. I, ah, 12.40pm right now, can't deal with that right now. <laughs> can't deal with that right now. So right now for me, it's. 10 past 6 at night. 10 past 6 at night. Fair. I'll look back later when I've more of a, a brain. <laughs> You're all over the place. No rest for the weary. What time are you? Me now, 6, 10 p.m. 10 past 6, evening. Hey, hey. <laughs> okay, so I've written down about pollinators I was going to do today so the pollinators the good bugs you want to attract on the ninth oh I've got on the eighth oh I'm just going to stop there because I'm really confused now <laughs> I've, I think I've said a load of rubbish then about it I'll sort it out for another time just go and look at painting at squirrels YouTube. 
channel, guys. Just do that. Just do that. I can't deal with it. <laughs> oh, look, on the 9th or the 8th. That's not helping, Shirley, is it? Six half hours. Okay, cool. Six half hours. Okay. <laughs> this is why I read things out. I don't have to think. So the pollinators you want to attract into your garden, the best ones are bees, hummingbirds, butterflies, moths, people forget the moths, wasps, bats. Can you get bats where you guys are? And what do they like? What do you need to grow to bring those in? Sorry, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. I'm just grateful you two are here. Okay, so what do bees like? If you want bees, you need asters, basil, or basil, as I believe a lot of you uh, foreigners say. <laughs> basil, basil. We say basil, basil, and it's a name. Basil, basil. Oh, you get bats. We get bats now. Swimming pool. I've got videos of rescuing bats. We get the fruit bats. It's because we've got a cave right by us. Do you know that? Have a cave. Um, they like bees like sunflowers, strawberries, mint, wallflowers, dry grasses, and dead wood mostly. Shirley's sage is thriving in your strawberries. Shirley doesn't want bats in the garden. Bat, yes, bat. Bats. Oh, bless you. You've retracted the, all the weird times. <laughs> Is that what you've done? Hummingbirds. What can you do to attract humming, hum, hum, hummingbirds? Bee balm. Butterfly weed. Fox gloves. Lilies. Petunias. And bright coloured feeders. So just get a feeder out there, preferably red. They like red. Now I would also say water because they like dragonflies. To attract butterflies, you mostly would like to have lavender, yarrow, Queen Anne's lace, Shasta daisies. And milkweed. They also like sitting on rocks. Very good, Neil. Hummingbirds hum because they forget the words. <laughs> oh, very good. And good insects are praying mantis. We get quite a lot of those here. Praying mantis and stick insects. We get quite a lot of those. So we're okay for those. And I understand in America, at least, you can actually buy them online in quantities of 100 or so. You can actually buy them and import them into your garden. Good of salt. Prime mantis, they eat caterpillars and they eat beetles. So they're good if you've got a caterpillar or beetle problem. They like ladybirds and they eat 5,000 aphids in their lives. You don't get them. Buy them to hatch them, yeah? And they like these um, not quite greenhouses. You know how you get the type of greenhouses made of sort of netty stuff, the sort of more temporary type ones. So people breed them in those. Um, spiders are a good insect. They also eat aphids and caterpillars and they like large plants. Aphid sucks. Is that a joke? Because that is what they do. <laughs> oh dear. If you've got aphids, I've got two main tips that I do. Every morning sprinkle water regardless over leaves because they don't like wet. So sprinkle that and also I get washing up liquid or dish soap, I think you call it, and put that on a paper towel and just literally wipe everywhere and they just come off very easily. And I believe in America, don't know about Canada, but your washing products are called Dawn. <laughs> 
Dawn's great to have around. <laughs> I was really weird, Ooh, weird seeing that. Everyone's got Dawn on their videos. If I could get like a euro for every time someone has that name, that would be cool. Uh, painting says, I had to throw out my beans. Oh, no. I've got no beans left. I was comatose when I was growing my beans, so I lost all of those. It was a time when they need... Um, a bit of care and yes dawn my favorite dawn's great dawn does a good job <laughs> when dawn doesn't run out <laughs> uh neil says i find lots of pseudo scorpions up here they love aphids or scorpions there are supposedly sand scorpions here but i don't know never seen them never heard anyone else see them but not scorpions as in scorpions I think people have just seen like um, shrimps because they say they're clear. I think they've seen shrimps. Uh, spiders. Yeah, they like large plants. What spiders do you guys have? Do you have dangerous ones at all? We don't. We don't have any dangerous spiders here. No dangerous. We have a jumping one and we have a trapdoor one that sort of comes up out the ground and grabs things. They're not big. They're not like tarantulas or anything like that. So we don't have any dangerous spiders. So I don't mind spiders. As I've said before, I don't mind anything that can't bite you or kill you. So I'm pretty okay on that. Um, good insects are also the ground level beetles. They like living under rocks. They like mulch. They like low plants and they eat slugs neil says we're canada the only big critters and humans dangerous yeah humans are humans only the big critters and humans are dangerous so right you don't get any dangerous spiders in canada spiders are friends or they would eat us <laughs> yeah don't you hate it though I've always worried like you sleep and the spider will go in your ear because you sometimes feel them or they dangle down. Good insects are hoverflies. They like parsley and eat aphids. They like parsley. Lace wings are really good. They eat spider mite and aphids. Plant cosmos, which lace wing like. Bees are good insects, they're pollinators. You need praying mantis and soldier beetles as they eat bugs that kill bees. So it's this whole ecosystem going on. This is when I hate people kill certain bugs off because that kind of starts messing around with the ecosystem. This is why England lost all their bees. They started killing off caterpillars and all sorts of things. Uh, bees like butterfly bushes, bee balm, lavender and uh, cone flowers and good uses of insects. They are pollinators, as I've said. They're good decomposers and food resources for other animals. So that's my little gardening section for today. I'm going to have a little drink. Yeah, see, not sponsoring Coca-Cola now. Looking for another brand. I do keep shunting down. There. Yes. What, what should we go for now, brand-wise? I should use my other cup now that's here. I normally show the other side of it. So I'll show the side you don't see. And I don't know if anyone is smart enough to know what that is. And I'm not going to say, because people watching later may well know that. And yes, that's a number six. And if I remember to show you at the end, I sometimes sign off showing you the other side. And that will be a big clue as well as to what that is. Okay, on to my next section. Oh, should we do the jokes? Let's do some 
jokes. Monday fun day after all. So we do jokes or quotes or funs and puns. Puns and puns. I've actually think of mostly just done jokes in this section. Oh, I put that here. Let's do some jokes. Let's do some jokes. Can you see my knee? No, because I've got my legs up on the table. I'm leaning on it now. Okay. Here we go with the jokes. I got rid of my vacuum cleaner. All it was doing was collecting dust. What's Forrest Gump's email password? One Forrest One. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Very good. Punny. Pun. Punny. Yeah, I like the Forrest Gump ones. What's Forrest Gump's email password? One Forrest One. <laughs> if you don't know the film, you're totally lost. <laughs> and I did a few lives ago. Oh, it might have been the live on my other channel talking about the condition um, highlighted um, by his brother. And it was actually based on a real person. So if you're interested in that, I can't remember if it was live on this channel. I've got no references as to what I talk about and what lives. So I can't help you on that. <laughs> uh, I don't really even title these lives. Okay, next joke. Did you hear about the guy who invented the knock-knock jokes? He won the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize. Knock, knock. Who's there? He won the Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. Whoa. Okay. What's red and bad for your teeth? A brick. Ha. Huh. They're not my sort of jokes. They're just like called stupid jokes. <laughs> Stupid, stupid, stupid. This one's more me. Two men walk into a bar. The third man watches where he was going. Jokes. Ah, oh, blind near. Why did I fall down the well? Because I couldn't see that well. Oh, very good. The disc got bigger and bigger, and then the frisbee hit me. That's brilliant, Neil. That's good. Oh, I like them. They're better than mine. <laughs> I'll do one more then. Neil's got the jokes going. Did you hear about the claustrophobic astronaut? He just wanted some space. <laughs> oh, dear. That's better. I do that. I just get this book out when I'm... I wouldn't say down. I don't get down. I don't allow it. When I'm not as good as I could be. And I've got quotes in the back. Some are funny quotes I've written. They're just all what I've collected over time. Um, got some funny quotes. Got some inspiring quotes. And I do a lot of these jokes. Uh, jokes? Quotes. I've actually got full videos of quotes on my other channel. Let me just type it in if anyone's not aware of it yet. Tranquil tranquility through life. This is why I can't moderate right at the moment. Through life's natural beauty. There, that's my other channel. And I have actually got to look at my playlist because I try to sort things out into some sort of order and there's videos on just quotes so if you're feeling down have a look at that it's a whole video just for different quotes with pretty pictures and things neil says what does a zombie vegetarian eat grains <laughs> is that good did i do you good reading that neil did I do good? <laughs> oh, yeah, I had some sad news today. Jimmy's, uh, you both know Jimmy. He's talking about now moving 
he's moved his life forward which is during my lunch time so i don't catch all of those and then today he was saying he's moving two or three to evenings instead now so well scuppered <laughs> well scuppered <laughs> so yeah so i need to um find some more lives that sort of link up with my time it's a shame because i really love those lives we we'll see. I might catch a tail end of one that he's doing early. I might just change my whole life, reschedule my whole life. Okay, let's move on to pastimes, pastimes. And today I thought I'd talk about Mary Poppins. We all know Mary Poppins. And no, English people do not talk like Bert the chimney sweep. Hey, Hedgehog's Homestead. Yeah, getting there. Getting there, getting there. Doing my best. I'm a bit slow today. I'm doing my best. Hi there, Hedgehog. Oh, funny that actually talk about hedgehogs. I've edited together all my clips of hedgehogs that I could find. I've already posted some before, so not those, but I've got loads of um, um, oh, brainstorm, loads of hedgehog new stuff. And do you remember a while ago, I was talking about, I went down my hoogle beds and there was a hedgehog caught underneath the net. Well, well, Laura, well, <laughs> I've got that on there as well. I took the talking out actually because i just put music over all of it and uh so you haven't got me in my talking so yay so that will be going up soon um neil says a ham no a ham sandwich walks into a bar and orders a beer the bartender said sorry we don't serve food here Yo, oh, that's my sort of joke, Neil. That's great. Yay. 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 So let's talk about Mary Poppins. And I like this film because of the animation with the people. Now, considering where it was made, that was pretty cool. And I always wanted to be in a musical on location with animation <laughs> i'm very spe very specific very specific so yeah on location this was all studio every single part of that film is in studio every single bit um yeah i would love that and i actually uh directed and produced a musical of Mary Poppins with the original music because a lot of it they didn't use. Oh, excellent. Now, if you've seen the more modern musicals of it, the stage shows, I love the choreography to, I'm not going to say all that now, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I love the choreography to that. So I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, just type in Mary Poppins musical and you could even type that in, but you don't have to, or songs from, dances from. I love the choreography of that. It's really cool. So about Mary Poppins, I know it's upside down because we folded it over. The talented songwriting team of Richard M and Robert B Sherman and Academy Award-winning musical director Irene Costell proved an unbeatable combination for Mary Poppins. The result was they won two Academy Awards for the Enchanted Musical for the best song, Chim Chimery, and for the best score. The brothers, Dick and Bob, pulled their musical talents at the suggestion of their father, songwriter Al Sherman. As staff composers at the Disney studio, they have composed hit tunes for such Disney successes as The Parents' Trap, Bon Voyage, I don't know that, 
and summer magic. However, Mary Poppins has proved the greatest challenge and most rewarding musical assignment of their careers. For the film, the Shermans composed 14 completely original songs. Let's Go Fly a Kite, Spoonful of Sugar, Jolly Holiday, I Love to Laugh, Chim Chimnery, Feed the Birds, Step in Time, that's one of my favourites, Stay Awake, that's one of my favourites, Sister Suffragette, A Man Has His Dreams, The Life I Lead, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, Fidelity, Bank and The Perfect Nanny. Since Mary Poppins, the Sherman Brothers have written the songs for recent Disney hits and also for Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Jungle Book and the Aristocats. <clears throat> Irene Costell, who received the Oscar for his scoring of West Side Story, divides his time between films, television and Broadway. Upon completing the supervision, arranging and conducting of the music for Mary Poppins, he won the same assignment for the film version of Rodgers and Hammerstein's The Sound of Music. He was reunited with the Sherman Brothers for Bedknobs and Broomsticks and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The technique of combining the live action photography with the animated cartoon has long been considered one of Walt Disney's major contributions to film. Pioneered by him as long as 50 years ago, the technique is used only on special occasions. Such sequences proved to be the highlights of the three caballeros, Song of the South and Bedknobs and Broomstick. Never has it been used more efficiently than in the delightful jolly holiday sequence in Mary Poppins. And I love it more when they actually interact with them rather than just doing something beside them. All oh, right, Neil, because you put Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that come up or not. I've got to review it and see if you're being rude. I don't know if you see that, guys, it comes up. Oh, dear. They should all see it now. I was like, who's messing around? I've got subscribers only on as I'm not well. I can't be dealing with other stuff right now. Right, I used Dick Van Dyke's pic from that movie as random unsolicited dick pics. Ha ha, yeah, see, that's why you've got help for review. Hey, Jimmy, I've just been talking about you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. You have to play it back later. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Been busy this morning. You're doing a grand job, my friend. Absolutely grand job. I've also explained why I can't type too much, so can't do much modding and things on channels at Mo. I try and be there. I do my best. Okay. Um... Yeah, I hope you all know each other. Do check out each other's channels if you don't know them. The astute tourist is Jimmy. He does um, fun facts and quizzes and uh, places to go, lots of tourism and things about countries and cruises and things. Blind Neil, um, really interesting stories I like on Blind Neil and about his life and Shows lots of different things. Hedgehog Homestead, that's Laura. I love Laura's channel. Um, lots of what's going on there, basically, and building up their homestead. Really love following that series. Painting with squirrels. Uh, lots of live chats there. I would say mostly live chats. You need to put some vids up. Um, following her garden, I'm lo loving following her growing and talk about growing in a small place, small area that's painting with squirrels. I would say you've got more going on on your windowsill. She doesn't always let us see the windowsill because <laughs> she's actually growing on the windowsill and she likes to show you something coming up. And then she's doing some vertical gardening as well. And as I say, she is going to be doing an auction, selling 
some of her paintings live on her channel. So go over to her channel and check it out. Do have a look. So while I've been incapacitated, what have I been doing? Well, I've been sorting stuff out. I've just been doing moving furniture in this room prior. So things are more or less where I want them to be. And now I'm just glad instead of moving everything out of shelves and out of cupboards and then sorting it out and then put it back, I wouldn't have got that far and I would have had a big mess. So basically what I've done was I wanted all my files on. I have to show you around at some point. So I wanted all my files together rather than some YouTube files there and other files there and different files there. I've just got them all together. So if I want the file, I know where it is. So I thought, right, I definitely want those there. So I took off everything off that shelf that wasn't files. And then the files went straight in there. Then I had the space where other files were. And so things were going in their new place straight away, thank goodness. And I didn't sort out anything such as the files, which is good because now I can literally sit and sort things out rather than if I just pulled everything out, which I normally do when I have a change round. So now on my discover, sort, declutter and organise. And guys, you need to do some of that today. It's amazing what you find when you sort things out. So discover something in a cupboard or a drawer, sort it, declutter it and organise it. And I will share with you what I'm sorting out now. Let me catch up with the chat first. Uh... Good things, I hope. No, not really, Jimmy. It wasn't good things about you. I was very sad. I was sad. Very sad. Uh, how's the day? Micro farming squirrel. Yeah, micro farming indeed. Micro farming. Uh, hide to shell. Painting with squirrels. Uh, too hot this week. Green onions in the fridge. Yeah, I've been missing a few of yours as I've not been right. And you know I get there when I can, surely. I just, if I'm going to a live, I didn't even look today to come on yours because I thought if, if I'm doing mine, I just needed a break for a bit to recoup. But you know I'm following your channel. Uh, too hot this week. Green onions in the fridge, but I takes it out to love it and change water. I love the way you talk. It takes it out. How's Mr. Colin Waffles? Well, I'm surprised he's not on my lap because most of my lives lately he comes running in and jumps up and starts pressing all the keys. So he's not here. So he must be asleep. He has taken over a box that's an empty box on the shelf. Uh, my friend in MB, where would MB be? Let me guess, new, new something, MB. It's not new beginnings. <laughs> I'm your only friend in new beginnings. MB, it's an MB. I'm so you're sad today. <laughs> I'm not sad. You may be sad. <laughs> you Brunswick. Oh, I wouldn't have got I wouldn't have guessed that, Neil. Oh, now Jimmy's sad because he thinks he's maybe sad. Oh, no. No. Oh, thought you said you were sad. No, I said you may be sad. <laughs> you may be sad for your announcement. I'm sad. Oh. He goes, I'm joking, Jimmy. I don't want to upset you. I'm joking. But I was a bit sad. <laughs> Your announcement, I was a bit sad. East coast of Canada, close to squirrels, sort of. Yeah, how far away are you guys then? Oh, I'd love to just visit some of you. Oh, my gosh. I just want, want to. As well as saying the other day, I feel a bit cut off because I'm in lockdown again anyway. Um obviously cut off i don't feel cut off in mm, no i only feel cut off when i want to go and buy something and browse that's the only thing i miss on oh, restaurants things like that but 
Um, but no, I just, I feel, I, first of all, when I was found YouTube community, I felt, oh, I've got people again, and I felt with it. But the more I hear about meetups and, uh, and then you guys talk about, oh, and someone's just down the road or a big meetup and everyone travels, and I'm like, I just feel really, like, out of that, you know. I really feel out of that. So I'm kind of – lonely is not the word. I'm not lonely. I could do something about it if I was lonely. I'm not lonely, but I feel like distant. Whereas initially with the YouTube community, I felt, wow, I'm with all these people around the world. I think it's the meetups that get to me. I really do. I really do. I think it's that. I don't know. Um, East Coast, Canada, close to squirrels. Right, you're the East Coast then, both of you. Uh, I'm having trouble hearing in the office. Need to keep the volume low. You know. Okay, Jimmy. <laughs> Three hundred. Uh, oh no, that's a bigger number. That's another one. Three thousand three hundred and seventy-one kilometers by car. I don't know that. I know miles. I know miles. That sounds a lot, though. That sounds a long way. How many hours would it take to drive there? Roughly. Oh, he's, Jimmy's laughing. Got to go, sister. On the, oh, cool. Cool. Are you beaching? What time, you know? You you said something about six hours back. Might you be beaching? Peace buys glitter bombs. Take care of squirrels. Take care, squirrels. Yes, I was showing you what I'm sorting out. I've got... This is only one of a lot... Oh, a big file. Now, this isn't in with all my folders. This is in the cupboard because I've got a whole music section. This is sheet music. Jimmy would like this, sheet music. Probably not Jimmy's music, though, because these are all from shows I've produced or directed or choreographed. So I have all the sheet music. And as I say, this is just one massive one. Some of them I had for song words, but a lot of them were, um, some were my shows, as in I choreographed, directed on the shows, and some were I choreographed for other musicals and whatever, other shows and companies and London shows and so forth. So I didn't always have the people to choreograph them. I just one company in particular would just give me the sheet music and say choreograph something with that and I I can read sheet music as in I can sit it now go that's A that's B <laughs> that's F <laughs> oh gosh 2094 miles good grief you're 16 hours and 20 minutes Oh, look, have you been looking it up? That's not too bad. That's, hold on, 16 hours. From England to the Caribbean was about nine hours. And I said I could probably do more than that, but I wouldn't have wanted to go to Australia. How far do you know, Jimmy, how far in flight time it is to Australia from America? Do you have that one down? 16 hours 20. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Of course, you have to take into consideration time of getting to airports and we're from, our nearest airport is Paphos. And that's probably about 25 minutes away. So you have to add that on to a journey. That's not bad at all. I thought I'd be further. Yeah, so as I was saying, I know what notes are on the sheet of music, but I can't read it as in read it, play it. I'm not musical in that respect. You hear this, and Jimmy will say this is true. People who play instruments 
can't really pick up dance and people who dance can't really play or pick up music. Yes, both those people can do the opposite, but you'll never be exceptional at both of those things. So you do get some people who can play music and they dance as well, but you've got the talent one way or the other because it's a completely different part of your brain that does music and dance. So you can't be 100% perfect on both of those. So, yeah, it was a bit awkward, this one, where I worked for a company and they gave me sheet music and went, the, oh, and these are non-dancers, by the way, as well. This company was non-dancers. It was like um, a review company. I don't think, think that's what you all call it, like a review company, a mature review company. And they were a church group. And they could, by Jove, could most of them sing. <laughs> they had choir and all the rest of it, but nobody could dance. And I had to teach them to dance within the time of choreographing for their show. I can't remember how long it was, but it, was, it wasn't very long at all. And they wanted it pretty outstanding. And so I said to the musical director, right, you play all these and give me cassette tape that's how old we are a cassette tape with these but give me exactly how like if you're cutting bits out or if you're not playing the intro exactly how you want it and then I'll choreograph around that so it's nice as well because all these massive file just this one this one's different companies I did so this I have most of this I did convert most of it from tape. And I actually, one was in here I've just seen from Snoopy, the musical. Did you know there was a musical of Snoopy? You know, Peanuts or Charlie Brown, whatever you know it as. It was a stage musical. And I've got all the music from that. I think that may well have started in America, very likely. And I did a musical using that music but nothing to do with charlie brown i integrated the music into other shows because i'm quite good at that um i think it's a bit of a thing now for musicals that they actually like the abba ones like mamma mia they used all their songs and used those songs within the story snoopy was the best oh yeah it's a dog named snoopy I like Woodstock the best. You know, Snoopy's little friend, Woodstock. I love Woodstock. And I love most that he didn't actually say words, but you could tell exactly what he was saying. He's just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and he had like little marks for when he was speaking. And he had attitude. You could tell what he was saying. Hey, Ash, how are you doing? How are you doing, my friend? Great to see you. Yeah, I clicked on, you've got no videos. I do like what you title a lot of your videos as, Ashley. I really like that. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and I I don't see them in, you know, you get alerted if someone uses your channel name or whatever, you get an alert, or well, I do. Um, I don't get them through that. It's purely from coming on your channel, and I'm like, what? Are you saying something about me in your video? And then no. And I'm assuming the last one was uh, Piggles sent me that one. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I like Charlie Brown. Uh, not Charlie Brown. Woodstock from Charlie Brown. But there are some great songs from that. And this one, I've just seen, I've turned the page. This song sheet is The World According to Snoopy. Now, I'll show, I'll say like Abba introduced all their songs within the story, but I just pick random songs and make those come up in the right time. So this song, The World According to Snoopy, I um, produced and directed um, a musical I made up of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I made Winnie the Pooh into a musical. And this song, The World According to, you're like, where's this going to? The World According to Snoopy, 
I changed the word slightly and called it the world according to Winnie or Love and Piggles. I love Piggles. And how's your wife doing? I hope she's doing better now. She's getting around a bit more now. It's a long haul when you have like um, knee operations. I know. So I ended up with one knee. It took ages. Yeah, so it's the world according to Winnie. And halfway through the song, I don't know if you know Winnie the Pooh, and he gets a, a balloon, Piglet gets a balloon, and I have Piglet flying across the stage <laughs> while they're singing the world according to Winnie. It, it was funny. I have to find uh, clips. Uh, and then this one's from Snoopy. There's, if you can uh, find the music anywhere, guys, the songs are really great or... I don't know if on YouTube the musical with Snoopy's there or not. It's just called Snoopy, the musical. Um, this song, Just One Person, it's a really nice song. And it said, if just one person believes in you, it's really poignant. Poignant, is that the word? Um, the words are, if just one person would believe in you, deep enough and strong enough believe in you, hard enough and long enough, before you know it, someone else would think, if he can do it, I can do it, making it two, two whole people who believe in you. And if two whole people believe in you, deep enough and strong enough believe in you, hard enough and long enough, there's bound to be some other person who believes in making it a threesome, making it three. People you can say, believe in me. And if three whole people, why not four? And if four whole people, why not more and more and more? And when all those people believe in you, deep enough and strong enough believe in you, hard enough and long enough, it stands to reason you yourself will start to see what everyone sees in you. And maybe even you can believe in you too. I just love that. I just love those words. So that I put in my musical version I created of Alice in Wonderland. And that is the Queen of Hearts. You know, she was quite evil and nasty to everybody and they all sung it to her to soften her heart i put that song in there but it's from snoopy so that's the way i roll <laughs> she's getting better that's really good to hear so i guess what i do is keep all these music sheets because it's shameful to throw away music sheets and then when Jimmy comes over in 20 years' time, <laughs> he can play all my songs that I love. He can play all my songs. I do have the music to these because, you know, I said about the guy who, the company, and I asked him, well, you want me to choreograph? I need the music because obviously tempo and that as well. And uh, I also got him to record all this music for me as well. So, because I knew I wanted to use these in future shows. The Queen of Hearts is just misunderstood. Yeah, that's me. No one understands me. People think they do. Oh. Uh, this one's... Oh, this is from Snoopy. Don't be anything less. Now, this is a really fast one. I wish I could play the right music for these because then I could show you the clips of how I use them. This is Alice in Wonderland. I use this in, even though it's from Snoopy. And it's Alice in Wonderland and the Cheshire Cat. Don't be anything less than anything you could be. It's really fast. The words are really fast. And it gets really confusing, which it's meant to be confusing. And that's why I thought Cheshire Cat trying to confuse Alice. As I say, it's really fast. Don't be a leaf if you can be a tree. Don't be a raindrop if you can be the sea. Because the leaf may fall, but the tree remains. It may never rain at all, but the sea remains. Better to be the tree and the sea. See? Don't be a cloud if you can be the sky. Don't be a 
a feather be a bird and fly. Clouds roll by, but the sky rolls on, and the bird can fly with a feather gone. Be the bird in the sky and the tree in the deep blue sea. Don't be anything less than everything you can be. Don't be the sail if you can be the boat. Don't be the lining if you can be the coat. It may lose its sail, but a boat will float, and a coat without a lining is still a coat. Better to be the boat and the coat. Quote, don't be a stick if you can be the drum. Don't be the sugar if you can be the plum. By gum, you can break a stick, but a drum will beat. Without a sugar coat, plums are still good to eat. Better to be the drum and the plum and the coat and the boat and the birds in the sky and the tree and the deep blue sea. Don't be anything less than everything you can be. I'll probably get copyright strike for using the words. Don't be the moo if you can be the cow. Don't be the furrow if you can be the plough. Because you can't get milk from the moo no way and the furrow's in a rut but the plough's okay. Better to be the cow and the plough. Now, don't be the sting if you can be the bee. Don't be a two if you can be a three. Because the sting can't make you honey bunny. Take two from three and you still got one. Better to be the three and the bee and the cow and the plough and the drum and the plum and the coat and the boat. Bird sky tree and the deep blue sea. Don't be anything less than everything you can be. Don't be a string if you can be the kite. Don't be the darkness if you can be the light. Though you can lose its string, you can still fly a kite. But wouldn't anybody here fly a kite at night? Better to be the kite and the light, right? Don't be the tail if you can be the dog. Don't be the bump if you can be the log. He can wag his tail, but he can't wag a he. A bump without a log isn't much to be. Better to be the dog and the log and the kite and the light and the three and the bee and a cow and a plough and a drum and a plum and a coat and a boat and a bird in the sky and a tree and the deep blue sea. Don't be anything less than everything you can be. <laughs> Sounds like Dr. Zeus. <laughs> Stuff in your heart is extreme. <laughs> now, let me tell you, when I made that show up and I made the music song for Alice in Wonderland, bear in mind the person who was Alice in Wonderland was practically in the show all the way through. She was only 14, only 14 years old. And... They don't just learn the script with me. They have to learn all the words. And it's not one of these things. They've got months and months and months. They get the words over the summer holidays. If they want to be in it, they can say, oh, I don't be, want to be in it. Or I don't want to be a big part or whatever. And, uh, and bear in mind, it was a stage school. Although we do acting, it was more for dancing. And they had to learn all the words. And there you go. They did pretty well. As I say, I could possibly show parts of the videos of those, but I can't show the song. It's really sad. It's really sad. Cat in the hat kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. She's getting better. Oh, yeah, that's your wife. I'm getting better. See, I, I can be fine one minute on the floor, the next minute. Perky up, rolly down, roller coaster. Here we come. That was rough before we started definitely rough so what else we got where did that little dog go that's snoopy and i actually did that as an audition piece i was about 21 playing a 14 year old <laughs> oh with the american accent dog <laughs> dog <laughs> there we go jimmy dog Where's that from? What accent from dog? Is that the southern accent? Dog. When I had my choice of a cat or a dog, why did I choose the latter? A dog. But he was different then. He was different when he was well, small. He even used to come to me where we call Snoopy, Snoopy, yes, Snoopy, Snoopy. Where did that little dog go? Then you sing. Only a moment ago, he was there, jumping in my arms, eating from my hands. I don't understand. Where did that little dog go? He's not the puppy I know. Soft and warm, tugging at my sleeve. What was your hurry to grow? Grow up and worry me so. It's not fair. Snoopy, don't you see? Growing up to be someone else who doesn't need me. 
our clouds. That's from Snoopy. This must be the Snoopy bit. Oh, there's a Woodstock one. Now, because Woodstock didn't speak, Woodstock just has music and it's really cool. Oh, I wish I could share these. Oh, I wish I could. Woodstock's theme, it's called. Ashley writes poems. I used to write poems when I was younger. I like a rhyming poem, though, because I think there's skill in a rhyming poem. Oh, this is from the musical The Rink. I'm still going through my big file. <laughs> from The Rink. There's a few good songs from there I've used from other things. Marry Me, that's from The Rink. Marry Me. Coloured Lights, that's from The Rink. Oh, it's pages long, that song. Oh, pages long. That gets faster and faster like merry-go-round. Merry I won't go around the rink, I think. I won't go around the rink, I think. If you won't go around with me, you better go around the rink, I think. Rink, rink, rink. Rink, rink. Now, these I've just got words to, no music. So, these would have been what I originally got from one of the companies that wants me to choreograph, give the movements to the words. That's a fun one when you don't know the music. All right now, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, all right now, we are best friends, best friends. There you go. You have to choreograph that. How do you know what it even is like? Come on, get happy. Oh, I changed words to those for a, um, an opening number. Yes, I changed the words to those. Oh, God, Annie. Oh, my goodness, Annie. Everyone's done, Annie. Toy shop doors locked up tight. Everything is quiet for the night. Uh, oh, now we've got a foreign one. Mucho gusto. Ay, quay, fabulosa. Ra, ay, ay, ay. Arriba. <laughs> well, we can guess the theme of that song, so that would have been all right to choreograph, wouldn't it? Oh, I know that is because it's got Sharpe Ryan. That's um, oh, High School Musical. Right, because it's gone into English now. Do the bop, 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 to the top, don't ever stop. Oh, is that one. Arthur's theme, best that you can do. That's a cool film with Dudley Moore. Arthur. It's just, oh, blown away. It's just called Arthur. If you ever get to see that, that's a pretty cool film. Part of your world, Disney. Yeah, I did a Disney choreography show. Whole New World, mm, Umbrella Man, that's cool. Anyone who's done taps probably done Umbrella Man somewhere, any umbrella. Walking in the Air, everyone must have done that. Walking in the Air, got the music from that. Oh, that's hand-drawn hand music. Oh, this is from a TV programme in England. It was too... You know, you get two comedians, like a funny one and a straight one. And they were called Cannon and Ball. Oh, Ashley, I know that. Cannon and Ball, Ashley. Bobby Ball and Tommy Cannon. My granddad used to think they were funny. And he used to pull his braces out. And their theme tune to the programme was really good. It was actually sung by Bobby Ball. Well, both of them sung it, but Bobby Ball was really it. And it was called Together We'll Be OK. And I actually got one of my music people to listen to it that could play by ear. And he'd listen to it for me because I only had the copy of these, um, the music. I think you could buy the records. I bought the record and he listened to it. And he wrote out the sheet music for me. So I've got the 
sheet music written out by hand for that. Laugh me a laugh, green me a green together. And then I know we can win. Dance me a dance, stroke me a joke, blow the clouds away. Together we'll be okay. Open the door, open your heart, then we've got somewhere to start. Just turn around, look what we found. Today's a brand new day. Pretty cool. Dance if it makes you happy. Don't know that one. Uh, fill the world with love. You remember them? Yeah, I remember them. Oh, you know Blue Peter? The It was a children's programme. Um, Blue Peter on BBC TV. And it was just a sort of um, different topics. And they'd show you how to make things. And then they'd interview someone. And they'd always have the Blooming Boy Scouts on. Lighting a campfire in the middle of the studio. Yes, it did go wrong one time. Had an elephant on that um, was a bit nervous, let's say, one time, and the presenter fell down in it, all these things. Well, it was called Blue Peter, the program, and I had the music from it, just the music, and I also had a poem, <laughs> completely different, and I put it to the music of Blue Peter. Oh, so that was quite interesting. That's actually called The Old Sailor with the music. And then I've obviously got, because I did Winnie the Pooh, I've got Tigger. Cinderella music. Someone's Waiting for You, which is from The Rescuers Disney film. This is supposed to be me sorting them out, but I'm just reading how they are. Everybody wants to be a cat. <clears throat> Not my favourite tune. Overplayed. If you're a dancer, you hear the same old music. Let me just put my light on. Because I'm going a bit grainy. There. Um, yeah, if you're a dancer, you hear the same old tunes and everyone dances to the same old music. And... In the days of disco exams, I realised do not use the music that's in the charts right now because that poor examiner has to go round the world seeing everybody dance to the most current top ten or top top five tracks. So they always came to me and they always said at the end, because I just tell you something at the end, you don't get the results straight away, but they just sort of say, oh, that went well or, you know, whatever. And she said, how refreshing to hear some different music because I would never pick. And all my girls and boys used to say, oh, Miss Dawn, can we, can we not dance to blah, blah? We really like that. And I went, yes, but I'm pretty sure the examiner won't like it by the time they get here. Oh, that. Oh, Warris and the Carpenter. It's a small world now. Some of you who go uh, to Disneyland a lot, those sort of things, you must be fed up with that sort of thing. Drip, drip, drop little April showers from Bambi. Uh, what's this? Puppets. Oh, these are Be Back Soon. That's from... Uh, What's his name? Artful Dodger. What's it called? Um, it's his name, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Please, sir, can I have some more? What's his name? Uh, oh, my goodness. It's gone out my head. Please, sir, can I have some more? It's Arthur. No, it's Arthur. What is it? <laughs> Help me, guys. Oh, for Oliver Twist, got it. Yay, when you got it. Oliver Twist, be back soon. Now, I've used that when we go round and we've done cabarets or um, you do like little performance se sessions at, say, Fates or things like that. And I did a little thing. They could all come back on at the end and sing Be Back Soon from there. So that's a good finale piece. Oliver, yeah, I beat you. I beat your typing. 
I dance like no one's watching. That's the way to do it now. And you would be shocked if you saw me free dancing, let's say, you know, if you go to a party or something and you just dance, you'll be shocked. You're like, I thought you were a professional dancer because I, you're not going to go and do a dance that you do dancing. This is the thing. Dancing you learn for performance, you would not dance like that anywhere. It's not dancing. Uh, remember there, I can dance. I can dance. It's everyone else that thinks I can't. Yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Sure. Uh, oh, it's the words again to don't be, I think, less than everything you can be. Got the word separate because obviously I give the children and, well, adults as well. I'm just on children's show for that one. Fabulous feet. Now, I can't remember what musical that's from, Fabulous Feet, but I use that in Alice in Wonderland for the caterpillar. And they did a dance, obviously, Fabulous Feet, and it's an actual song. I can't remember what musical. No, I don't know what musical that's from. It's got to be a tap musical or something like that because it all means about tap dancing. I thought that's a brilliant song. For the caterpillar, Nancy Wonderland. Jimmy's lurking. Neil says, I used to clear the dance floor. It may have something to do with my cyber cave lying around. I like to think it's my brilliant dancing. For sure. For sure, Neil. Absolutely. Uh, close the door. Now, I changed the words to this. It's, I can't remember, Mike could probably know. It's old timers, I think, um, you know, like the old black and white radio comedians. There was a group of those English ones, and they brought out a record with Close the Door. And it, I don't know what they were singing about, Close the Door, someone's coming in or an alien's coming in. I can't remember, but it's saying Close the Door, da, 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 Close the Window, da, da, da. I can't tell you the real words, but I just thought it's close the door. And again, I took that music and I changed the words for Alice in Wonderland. You know when she eats and gets big and then eats something else and goes small? Well, it's the bit where she's eating and she's growing and she's... I do effects in my shows, in case you don't know. And she's in the house and then like these great big legs came out the house and the big arm came up the chimney and all these things, and I use this, close the door, remember I've changed the words, close the door, she's coming out the window, close the door, she's coming down the stairs, close the door, she's right up to the ceiling, that whatever she is, is everywhere, and I've changed the words of the whole song, like <laughs> my radio, yes, yes Ashley, because in the old days, everything was black and white, wasn't it, trees were black and white, Everything is black and white. And that's why your parents, you say you're green. So you're like, well, where are they? Because everything's black and white. Everything's black and white. You not know that. You not know that. I thought you were older, Ashley. That's why television was black and white, because everything really was black and white. There was no colour. Films, black and white. Photos, black and white. That's evidence that the world was black and white in the old days. You look at any old photos or any film footage, nothing was in colour. Did you not know that? People were just black and white. That's where um, Michael Jackson got his song from. He's talking about history, black and white. This is why. And that's why you see old pianos. They've still got black and white keys. That's from the old days when the whole piano, black and white. There was no colour in life. You don't know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you're in colour because you wasn't born in uh, the days when things were only in black and white everything was black and white you know that that's why pandas are ancient creatures they're black and white skunks they're like came after the dinosaurs that's why they're black and white you know that <laughs> no <laughs> we had colour radio so it's better listening yeah colour Oh, look at that. There's a big difference between uh, my community. Ashley spells colour how I spell colour. 
New spells Kala, the American and Canadian way. <laughs> Kala, can you describe those? No. <laughs> no. No. It's like, can you describe a smell? You can't because you can only relate it to something else. Okay, my last name's White. No. So it was uh, Statham. Statham. Or is it Bourne? It's either Bourne. <laughs> it's either Bourne or Statham. Your surname, Ashley. I know that. I know that. <laughs> Statham. I think it's Statham, your surname. You don't know my surname because I've got three surnames. <laughs> Depends on the, what I'm doing as to what surname I use. It's about both ways. Do you know what? I've just given up typing in English on uh, on YouTube because even though I've got the English correction on, it still corrects in American English. So you'll see I type your way. And also people could tell me I spell wrong on some channels. You'd like, oh, you've misspelled. I was like, mm. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What we got now? Thumbelina, Thumbelina, Thumbelina. Tiny little thing. Don't know what I use that for. Don't know. Curator and Curasa. Obviously for Alice in Wonderland. How do you do? Shake hands, shake hands, shake hands. Tweedle dum and tweedle dee. This is quite a good song. Remember, this is tweedle dum and tweedle dee. Sort of a bit nonsensical. Nonsensical. Um, <clears throat> you go through life and never know the day what, what fate may bring. A situation that will prove to be embarrassing. Your face go red, goes red, you hide your head and wish that you could die. But that's old-fashioned. Here's a new thing you should really try. Say, so how do you do? Shake hands, shake hands, shake hands, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you, uh, you introduce your girlfriend to your very special beau and then he doesn't call you and the next thing that you know, you see them both are walking down the street as big as life. And when he says, my dear, I'd like you to meet my wife. Say, so how do you do? Shake hands, shake hands. Um, you take your girlfriend on a date and you have so much fun that you forget to bring her, her home until it's after one. Her father's waiting at the door as angry as can be. It's happened to me lots of times, so take this tip from me. Just how, say, how do you do? Shake hands, shake hands. Well, at a wedding of some folks you hardly know by sight and in a conversation with a woman on your right, you say you think the bride's a mess, her face she ought to hide and when you find out, you're talking to the mother of the bride. So how do you do? Shake hands, shake hands. While walking through a cemetery very late at night, you find you're confronted by a figure dressed in white and the blood inside your veins has quickly turned to ice Everything will be okay. Just take my advice. How do you do? Shake hands, shake hands. You walk into a restaurant as hungry as can be. And when you've had a meal of everything from A to Z, we say Z, you realise you haven't got a single cent with you. And when the manager comes over, this is what you do. Just say, how do you do? Shake hands, shake hands. You're speeding down the highway and the feeling is superb. And then you hear a siren and pull over to the curb. And when a cop who's big and tough comes walking up to you and asks you where the fire is that you're going to, say, how do you do? Shake hands, shake hands. You go into a barber shop to get yourself a shave. And if you're the kind of guy who never can behave, you ask the manicurist for a little kiss or two. And then when you discover it's her husband shaving you. So how do you do? Shake hands, shake hands. And then it finishes, a handshake and a happy greeting's mighty hard to beat. So at the risk of boring you, I'm going to repeat. Remember in the future that no matter what you do, here's one way to get out of any mess. 
you get into just say how do you do shake hands shake hands there okay ashley thanks really great to see you um all the best to your wife jimmy says what do you call a bear with no teeth oh anything you like because he can't bite you <laughs> A gummy bear. Oh, that's cool, Jimmy. Gummy bear. I like that. You lot are perking me up big time. Uh, these are Alice in Wonderland songs. Ah, oh, these are songs again. These are from a review company. I was just given sheets of words, no music. And choreograph something from these I, was like, I didn't even know who they wanted in what things either um so they wanted the seven dwarves song hi ho what's this one when you wish upon a star why do not nurses like red crayons hmm, nurses red crayons Oh, I know. I got it. Got it. So they can draw blood. Got it. Never smile at a crocodile. Oh, this is a song I do love. Can you feel the love tonight? And I really choreographed something special with that. That was really nice. Bear in mind, these were, weren't my people and they were non-dancers. Oh, this was something else. I will post some of these videos of this review company it's called stars and it does stand for st albans amateur review stars and they kept saying oh will you be in it because like choreographic but can you be in it because uh it looked really good and i'm not someone who does that because that's their level that's what they're doing uh, i'm not in it but i love i love shows obviously do but no i was choreographing it and they got, I want to be like you. And they had one of the, because it was everybody who went there. Um, as I say, a church group. And they were from seven to old adults, like pensioners, really old pensioners, not just young. Um, and on the last night, I don't know if any of you know, amateur review companies always do a mess up on the last night. And they make funny things happen and all everything else. And they decided I was going to go on as many different dances and songs as possible because the musical director who ran the whole thing, he was playing in like the orchestra pit right in front of the middle. So he was down lower than the stage, but he could direct musically from there. And they wanted to see how far through the show I could get without him noticing I was in it. And when he did clock me, he was then looking out every, like, dance. Like, obviously, I couldn't do every single one because changing. And they were trying to come up with costumes for me to match in quickly. And that was really fun. And this I Will Be Like You, it was one of the dads was dressed up in a gorilla costume. Or well, not gorilla, is it? A run your tank? is the orangutan he was being and so i was in that and then you can hear him because a video in it it's like do you think dawn's in that and then someone's going yeah yeah she's in that because it's a lot better tonight. <laughs> so that was really one of the most fun shows and i've forgotten now where i do appear in some of them playing it back but i will do that i will sort of show and explain when i do the video that he was in that uh jimmy's got to go work business pank is going away thanks for being there jimmy much love really appreciate you neil says my doctor wants to draw blood and draws him doing it <laughs> dracula is very strange very old doctor nice neil that's really funny yeah, so doing this, well, I remember there was 
One was where I sort of appear. It was hard to try and like quickly find costumes because obviously there's not spare. One I remember was I'd like to teach the world to sing. And I think they were all just wearing black and white, any clothes black and white. Because uh, these amateur places only have little money for costumes and that. Although I gave them a lot of my costumes for a lot of stuff. Um, for they did uh, one of the songs from, they did that So Long Farewell from Sound of Music. And I've got really great dresses, all matching. So they had those for that. Anyway, um, yeah, like to teach world to sing, they wore black and white. So obviously we're running around backstage like, who's got something black, who's got something white? And I'd actually just come from doing my work at stage school. It was a Saturday and I'd just finished. So I'd come and I had my, I had a t-shirt on with my dance um, studio logo on, which is black, but it's like bright yellow uh, print. So I turned that inside out, so that was all right. And uh, one of the boys had white shorts because it was the summer. And I was like, all right, the boy's like a grown-up boy and had his shorts on. What else did I jump in and do? Oh, the like finale was a really long sort of end bit. And it was, uh, uh, what is it? Isle Bonita. Isla Bonita. Madonna. Isla Benita, Isla Benita, or whatever. So there was quite a few bits with tropical clothes on. And as I say, it was summer. So there were lots of shorts and shirts and things. I did that. I might think of another one now why there's all these uh, songs. All My Loving, Hard Day's Night. Julia Says, I liked that. I had to choreograph that. The Perfect Year. That's really nice. Perfect year, I love that song. How Deep Is Your Love, Saturday Night Fever. Memory from Cats, so over that. That's another one people use all the time. Copacabana, that was one of the finale songs. It was sort of a long finale with lots of tropical songs. So obviously I was in that bit somewhere. I got all my choreography notes. Uh, like La Isla Bonita, Copacabana. That was part of it. California Girls, that was part of it. Do Re Me, that was one of the ones they did from Sound of Music, my favourite things. Lambeth Walk, I don't know if I appeared in that one. I think I possibly appeared in that because that was all the adults, a lot of the, that was the No Hoper adults was in. <laughs> Putting on the Ritz. And I actually taught them to do a very simple tap dance for that. And they got all the tap shoes off me. I mean, he wanted them to do, put it on the Ritz. You can't do anything but do a tap number, can you? So I taught them to tap dance. Singing in the rain. So long farewell. We did that one. Like to teach the world to sing. New York, New York. I don't remember. Perhaps that was part of the adult tap ones as well because i've got all pencil notes on it so i did do it oh three of the dads did that um i don't know what it's called that three little maids are we that one three little maids are we do, 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 do that one and that was so funny so i choreographed that there's a couple of sketches they did as well in it well, that's quite a long one. Oh, there's pages of that. Yeah, so that is that first file. <laughs> Literally, I've just gone through that first file. I like going through old things because it does stir up memories. It reminds you of certain stuff as well. Well, I've been on, oh, two hours. Two hours, definitely doing a lot better. Again, I think these lives, I wasn't sure if they'd drain me, but they actually seemed to be doing me some good, which was the initial plan of doing the lives. It's now 7.30 p.m. here. So I think I will call that a day. Oh, look, it's 1 hour 59. I'll go to the two. Let's just see the little numbers go around. 159.20. 
so I can use this time to just say, if you're watching this back later, do um, hit the thumbs up. If you came into this later, do go back to the beginning because there's some shout outs at the beginning and some channels to watch. So do check on that. Don't forget to have a look at some of my older videos if you're new to my channel. And certainly do check out all my channels as well. I'd really appreciate that. Don't forget to leave a comment as well because I do reply to all the comments. So thanks for being in my awesome community. Thanks, Neil, for being able to stick out to the end. I appreciate everyone that did come in. And I know many can't be in here on the live as I can't be on your lives. But thank you for watching later if you do that. So have a good day. Keep hope in your heart. And until next time, Meraki. Bye, guys. <laughs>